excellent news for you guys from the state of New Mexico and Wolfpack. But uh, we're not done yet. We're gonna need your help, but there's only two days left, so it is in fact panic time. First, let me give you the good news. Uh, Democracy is alive at the state level. So yet another bipartisan vote. Uh, first, let me tell you how you can help. Go Allison at wolf-pack.com. If you're in the state of New Mexico, you need to email her right now. They're in the middle of the fight and they need to pass the house. And if they do, it becomes state number six. Wait a minute, don't you have to pass the Senate first? Wrong, we just passed it yesterday. Let me see the vote here, 2714. Wow. This It has passed the Senate. In New Mexico, Senate Joint Resolution 12, with the heroic help of, um, of of the state legislators there. By the way, another bipartisan win. Both Democrats and Republicans voted for that, and they all the people who voted for it should get tremendous credit, especially because in this case, the they're, the lobbyists are on to us, mm -hmm. and 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 it's not just the right wing, by the way, also left wing lobbyists coming around saying, "How dare you?" I, I'll leave out the group for now. But a left wing lobbyist group, that Allison that you're gonna email to get involved in this fight, they said, oh, that's just that chick from California who's got like a religious following. <laughs> what? And they're supposed to be liberals. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. No, Al, you know who that quote unquote chick from California is? She was a school teacher in Orange County. And she joined Wolfpack, she had never even heard of the Young Turks. She just wanted to get money out of politics, research what was the most logical group who had the best plan. Which And, and she's like, I'm gonna join that one. And she was such an amazing volunteer that she moved all the way up the ranks until she became one of the national directors. Yeah. That's that chick from California. And it's not about it, unlike those guys, we don't have cults of personality. This is a, over 35,000 volunteers. So by the way, why did it pass the Senate? Despite all those lobbyists that are against it. Not only the great work of those legislators, but you know what influenced them? You guys did. Every time there was a committee hearing, it'd be 50 Wolfpack volunteers, wow. all from New Mexico, all from their districts, and they're like, what is this? We've never seen anything like this in a subcommittee hearing or a committee hearing, let alone the floor vote. So that's why we need your help right now. So there's only two days left. You gotta go to the House, because it has to pass the Senate and the House, and then New Mexico becomes state number six. Wow. So now, how does it work? What does it mean to be state number six? There's two ways to amend the Constitution. This is to do election reform to get free and fair elections. That's why we get bipartisan votes, because actually Republican voters also love that. So now, the two ways to do it is one is through Congress. You think two thirds of this corrupt Congress, that swamp, is gonna say, "Oh yeah, yeah, go ahead, get the money out of politics that, that put me in office in the first place. Oh, I, the, it's rigged, <laughs> it's rigged and put me in office. Why would I wanna <laughs> yeah. fix that system, right? <laughs> so they're not gonna do it at the national level, but the founding fathers were both geniuses and actual revolutionaries. They put a second way to do a revolution in the document. They said, uh, you can get an amendment through the states. You get 34 states to call for a convention. At the convention, you discuss the amendment, propose the amendment. Either way, you need 38 states to ratify the amendment. So don't believe any demagoguery on the left or the right about this. It's in our constitution for a reason, for exactly this reason. Now I gotta show you some of the heroes here in New Mexico. Senator Ortiz E. Pino tried to explain this as well. He's our sponsor for this Senate resolution, fought for a tooth and nail. Uh, one of the new founding fathers as we get our democracy back, watch. Wow. House Senate Joint Resolution 12 is a free and fair elections resolution. And it calls for an amendment to our US Constitution that will restore free and fair elections in America. Since Congress is incapable of solving, it seems these days, any problem, the resolution calls for a limited Article 5 amendment convention to propose an amendment that would deal with the influence of money in our elections. Most amendments to the Constitution start this way. The states begin calling for a convention and eventually Congress gets the message and makes the amendment themselves, proposes the amendment themselves. So he, he's explaining that for two important reasons. One, uh, there's talking points uh, and we trace them all the way back because some groups on the left use them too. Oh my God, a convention that would bring real change. 
If you're on the left, you should want real change. Mm -hmm. The good thing about the guys on the right, the actual voters, is that they like change. That's why they voted for Trump. Right? They're like, right or wrong, whatever kind of change, I, I get that this system is screwing us, right? So I, that's- I had a lot of Democrats. A lot, a lot of Democrats voted for Trump. Uh, and, and because they're desperate for change. Mm -hmm. But the elites hate change. That's why they hate the convention. They're like, convention, that's real change. Don't do that. And we trace back the talking points to about runaway conventions. You know who originally came up with them? The John Birch Society. Hmm. The same guys who think there's fluoride in the water, some communist plot or whatever, mm -hmm. and Eisenhower was a communist. Those wackos came up with talking points that groups on the right and left are using today about, oh, conventions, that would bring real change, don't do it. And guys like Mark Levin have been pushing this notion of a constitutional convention for a long time. So even if you don't agree as to what the outcome of the convention would be, you can at least get them on board in terms of the principle of holding them in the first place. So see, that's exactly what the elites hate because right and left can come together. And, and you don't have to agree on what the convention should be. You can only have a convention on one topic at a time. Mm. So if Levin wants to have it on whatever conservative cause he wants to have it on, that's when liberals freak, freak out. They're like, wait, they get to use democracy too? Right. Yeah, yeah, they also get to vote. That's how democracy works. But guess what? And their solution, some of the groups on the left is, no, we should unilaterally disarm. Uh -huh. we, we shouldn't use the convention at all. Uh, no! It's in the Constitution. Use it. it brings, it's a real agent of change. So, and and the uh, and then he's explaining again. Look, we got you. You, you got to get to 34 states. And in fact, I, I've got another congressman. Who, I mean, senator who's going to talk about it uh, in a second. First, let me go to Senate Majority Leader Peter Worth. Without him, there's no way this thing would have passed. So, bless his heart, he gives another argument. And it really has changed the landscape so dramatically that I have grave concerns. Uh, for our democratic process moving forward, given these huge amounts of unlimited money that are in the system. So, you know, this is a way for the people to express their frustrations and their concern by coming and pushing something like this. And I, I can't give enough kudos to all of the young people who have gotten involved in this issue who care and are looking at our future. And so, uh, I have certainly listened to them. So I, look, we wanna bring democracy back and you do that by getting the corrupting influence of money out. But I also want you to remember that democracy exists at the state level. So seeing politicians actually stand up for you, it's kind of an amazing sight. You know, we're used to the somewhat older middle-aged politicians who get up and tell you, no, the oil companies are great and the defense contractors, contractors are great and your kid doesn't need an education, right? Mm -hmm. And here are politicians who actually give a damn and who are responsive, who see all these wolf pack and other citizens who are saying, no, I want free and fair elections, and I'm from across the political spectrum. And they recognize it and they fight for you, it's amazing. And, and some of that is because it is, not in all cases, but it is cheaper to run for office in these states. And they see how money is starting to trickle in. You know, it used to be just California and New York and, and big cities and metropolitan areas, but now it's starting to trickle into rural communities and they're like, we don't want you know to, to, to have to dial for dollars 80% of the time in a rural community. It changes the format of how politics works at the state level. And, and my frustration is that it's not just that the establishment doesn't want this convention for the sake of hearing the opposition. It's that they want to stifle ideas. Mm. When you don't put two sides, the opposing sides at the same table to talk things out, then guess what? Those centrists in the center, suddenly their ideas get pushed out because it's really obvious where the right ideas are, the proper ideas are. And, yeah. Bernie, and Bernie Sanders just showed. I mean, they saw what happened during the presidential election. Bernie Sanders was outpacing Hillary Clinton uh, for several months with small dollar donations. So they see that the big, the big money machine doesn't necessarily equate to getting you in office or keeping you in office. Yeah, and so uh, on, yeah. on uh, Nomi's point, uh, there's a lot of Republicans who vote for this legislation across the country because they're like, wait, I don't want Rove coming in here and tell me what to do mm -hmm. at, at the state level. I certainly don't want Bloomberg coming in here and yeah. telling me what to do. So this doesn't really help me at all. It helps the national guys who have m money from these donors by the millions and, and overall by the billions. And and when he said uh, the, uh, the first uh, speaker there, uh, uh, Pino said, that most amendments actually happen by calling for a convention. I don't know if you know that a lot of people don't know it. it is that the threat of the convention scares the bejesus out of Congress. And more than half of our amendments have been passed because of a threat of a convention. 
So they're like, huh. it'll get to a point where they're about wow. to have the convention and even for the direct election of senators. None of the senators were elected through direct election. And then you have the convention threat and they're like, yeah, yeah, we meant direct election. Of course, that's what we meant, mm -hmm. right? So keep on going. Uh, let's do one more here. Uh, this is uh, Senator Ivy Soto. If somebody is concerned on the right as to how many blue states might try to manipulate our constitution, if somebody is concerned on the left as to how many red states might try to manipulate our constitution, in this last election, 30 states voted for Trump and 20 states voted for Clinton, and it takes 38 states to amend our constitution. So not only, Mr. President and colleagues, would we become number six of a goal of getting to 34, unless Congress takes action before that, the ratification would require both blue states and red states of anything that came out of there. And if what came out of there was not thoughtful and balanced, it would not get ratified. And so I feel, as someone who, who loves our country and loves our Constitution and believes it is a, it is a, it is a wonderful uh, document that, that is very forward-looking, I feel comfortable supporting this. Because supporting this, what we're doing today is we're saying, Congress, hey, pay attention. Listen to us. There's an issue here. Yeah, absolutely. And so he, he makes two great points. One you just heard right there, which is, look, all the fear mongering on the left and the right about change. Oh My God, what if they say the aliens should take over and we should shred the Constitution and just hand it over to the lizard people? How are you gonna get 38 states to ratify that? 38 states are not gonna ratify anything like that. You need something that the, all the American people agree with. By the way, there's only one thing the entire American people agree with. Well, to be fair, also Social Security. <laughs> Protecting Social Security and Medicare and election reform. It's a disaster. And the guys who say, "Oh, you'll have this convention filled with all these different topics. No, it has to be one at a time. Do you know how many convention calls there's been? 700. Wow. But they're on different topics, so that's why we've never had a convention. You need 34 on one topic. New Mexico can be number six on this one topic of election reform. But it's in the vote in the House is in two days. So you gotta go right now. If you're in New Mexico, Allison at wolf-pack.com, get in the fight. You swing these representatives more than you can imagine. So let's go get them. Allison at wolf-pack.com, make it happen right now. The corporate media has multi-million dollar anchors. We have you guys. Go to tytnetwork.com slash go and you can help hire investigative reporters that'll do real journalism. 